Hello everyone, welcome to a brand new Star Wars Old Republic video and today we're talking about command crates. Now in my recent video about Galactic Command, I've already talked a lot about command crates but there have been some major changes. So to quickly recap what command crates are, as you're playing the game you're going to be getting these things called CXP which is command experience points. As you gain more command experience points you will rank up your command rank and each time you rank up your command rank you will gain a command crate. These command crates will contain anything from a really good PvE gear and as you increase your command rank, the stats of the gear will increase to ultimately giving you some of the best gear in the game. And then you also have some cosmetic items and companion gifts. That stuff can be sold on the GTN. On to some of the changes that have been made to, uh, to command crates that was announced in the last live stream because these are pretty important and they do change a lot of stuff. And it was what the community has been asking for. These changes include things like the gear you get from these command crates will be based upon your discipline, not on your class. So for example, if I'm a juggernaut, I won't just be getting tank and DPS gear and it's just kind of RNG. Uh, you know, if I want to be a DPS, I might get tank gear and that would suck. But now it's based upon discipline. So if you're an immortal tank when you're opening the command crate, not when you earn it, but when you actually choose to open it, then you will get tank gear. And if I'm in, say, vengeance or rage spec, then I will get DPS gear, which is absolutely awesome because that obviously reduces the chance of RNG kind of screwing you up and giving you something you don't want. Another really important thing, and this was a huge concern in the community, which was that what happens if you keep getting an armor set you don't want? So for example, let's say you have everything you need for a complete armor set, you're ready to go out in PvE, but all you need is the belt, for example. And then they keep saying, um, and you keep opening these packs, and you keep not getting the belt. That can be really annoying, really frustrating, and ruin the whole gaming experience for you. But what they did confirm to us was you can remove the mods. So for example, if you have a, a belt, if you have a, if you need a belt but an, an upper body armor comes out, well you could just remove the armoring and the mod and put it into a legacy belt and then, you know, not only give that belt to other players across your server but also use that belt for yourself. And that way you don't have to keep just wanting to get the one single armor piece that you need from the command crate. And I know pre uh, previously you weren't allowed to remove the armoring with the set bonus. It wouldn't allow you. So you couldn't remove an armoring from an upper body armor and put into a belt it would say you know you just can't do that however that is being changed you are going to be allowed to do that so that's going to make it a lot easier for you to complete your sets and i think everybody re it really takes out the mods and puts them into legacy armoring so that they can transfer it across different characters and so especially with the mastery stat which is kind of universalized uh, these armor sets so i think everyone's going to be doing that anyway so th that's really not anything to worry about if you were worrying about rng and the fact that you'll keep getting one armor set that you don't one armor piece sorry that you don't want and so you're unable to complete your armor set that's no longer going to be the case because you can remove mods um, so that's going to reduce that uh, you know a source of frustration for the community now another really important thing is the rate of earning command crates. This was another source of concern because a lot of people were wondering how much work do I have to put in to get a command crate. And the one thing they ensured us in the live stream, and I'm really happy about this, is they said it will be easier to gear your players after Kotet hits than it is now. So whatever the system is now, they're trying to streamline it and make it a lot easier to gain gear, and they anticipate that it will be easier. They said that right from the start when you're trying to earn command crates, you'll actually be earning them like every half hour just doing normal stuff like war zones and, uh, and heroics and stuff. So it's actually going to be pretty easy to earn these command crates at, at, um, at the lower tiers. As you go up, it gets a little bit harder but they still said it's very very accessible. They said for example if you're doing nightmare ops, it wouldn't be uncommon for you to earn like up to 3 command crates just doing one operation. That right there is 3 pieces of gear and so that's pretty awesome and they did kind of make a point that you're not just getting gear from these crates you're also going to be getting cosmetic items and a companion gifts that you can sell on the GTN maybe make a few credits on the side or they did say if you don't want that you can just disintegrate it and that's going to make it easier to get your next command crate now they didn't give us like in, any information about this disintegration feature, how much is it actually going to uh, give you towards your next command crate. However, given that you can earn like a command crate every 30 minutes at the start and then it's probably going to take you maybe an hour, 1 hour, 15 minutes to uh, earn your command crate at the higher levels, uh, given that there's such a short period of time, I think the disintegrate feature is actually going to be very useful and it's actually going to uh, you know, really increase your chance of getting the next command crate, maybe even like get you already halfway there to your next command crate. So that's going to be pretty awesome. And so that concludes that those are the major changes happening to command crates and I am definitely a lot happier now with, the, with these things. Before I was actually pretty happy with them, I kind of liked the RNG factor, but now they've made it really clear that it's going to be easier to get gear. And RNG doesn't even really come into play anymore because we can remove mods so it doesn't matter if you keep getting just one armor piece from the whole set because you can just remove the mods, put into legacy gear and use whatever you want. And that's really awesome. So hopefully this reduces some frustration within the, within the community because I know there's been a huge outcry and people 
people have been leaving the game and stuff, but they really don't have to. I mean, I actually really like this. And they made it very clear that their goal is not to complicate things, not to make, you know, not to upset the PvE community, but their goal is simply to make gearing very simple. And I actually agree with this point because they said right now in the game, there's way too many currencies, too many crystals. Uh, there's so many vendors and I've always been confused about this. Why are there vendors on Oricon and on the fleet and on these different planets and daily areas? I always got confused in terms of do they give the same gear? Is it just a vendor for accessibility reasons or do they actually give different gear with different stats? And to date, I haven't even really gone and checked it out. But I really, uh, I really agree with that. And the fact of the matter is it can be very, very overbearing for new players that come into the game. Players who might use a level 60 character boost and then be like, I don't know how to gear in the end game. And so this does make it very easier for them. It kind of just says this is the one way to earn end game gear. Just do these activities and the gear will kind of come to you. You don't have to run to a vendor. You don't have to worry about which tokens you have and stuff like that. So I really like that and hopefully that reduces some frustration in the community and hopefully you know we won't see PV errors leaving and stuff and um, and maybe Bioware will get their game together and give us some group content in the future. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one.